If you have not watched the first two videos of this series, I'll link them up there in the top right hand corner. And if you'd like to follow along with the slideshow, it's linked down in the description below. And a small recap of what we've already gone over. The first two videos are not to teach you how to trade or anything really about the setups or anything like that. It's just a way of viewing the market. It's going to get you in the right mindset going forward through the rest of the series. The next two videos are going to be all about setups and trees, uh, but without the first three videos, which this one's included, that information is going to be absolutely useless. Finding setups that repeat over and over again is what's going to give you your real consistency when trading. You want to be trading those setups and really only those setups because that, like I said, is going to provide you with consistency. If you're just trying to trade direction because of how the chart looks, you're most likely going to be trading with your own emotions and not what the chart is actually telling you. So when you're looking at direction, you could have some thoughts like it looks like it's going to go up or it's going to go down. Uh, I only trade this one pair because it's my favorite. Instead of looking over the, a basket of instruments, trying to find the best quality setup. Hard to size into a lot of these trades because the swings are usually very tight and choppy or they swing wide back and forth. And they tend to produce very 50-50 results or even worse. Compared to actually trading setups, you have a playbook of things that rec uh, occur over and over again. And when those things occur, you know exactly what to do. You have a playbook meaning you have exact things you're looking for to occur in order to build a certain kind of trade. They're repeatable, they show up consistently. Uh, they're scalable in size due to their um, repeatable nature, which means that over time and as uh, your account size and as your, and as your performance dictates, you can scale those up in size and trade them bigger and bigger and bigger, the better you get. Usually going to be quick, fast, and explosive moves. They're over within five minutes to an hour. Now, of course, some of these are going to go longer than that, uh, but the average time in a trade, you know, these larger moves, they could take up to an hour or maybe a little bit more. Uh, but a lot of times the big explosive move, the first impulse is going to come and it's only going to last for 5, 15, 30 minutes. And then you don't really need to be in the trade anymore because it's already gone 50, 60, 70, 100 pips or more. And tend to be higher probability due to their repeatable nature. Because you have a playbook of setups that show up over and over again, you know exactly how to trade them, exactly how to manage them, and exactly the behavior that should be occurring once you enter the trade. Peak formations and the market maker cycle. Now, there's lots of different ways that describe how the market moves, but one of the interesting things from all these systems, whether it be Elliott Wave, Wyckoff, Dow Theory, uh, Taylor Trading Technique, Beat the Market Maker, BTMM, all of these different systems show that the market moves in waves of three. And there's lots of different ways of classifying what type of move. And with Elliott Wave, you have like the impulse wave and all these different things that can a lot of times make the, the analysis process very confusing and a little bit difficult to reproduce over time. However, uh, I'm not gonna focus on any of that. I just wanna kind of go over the cycle that I learned, which was from Beat the Market Maker and also Taylor Trading Technique, the three-day cycle, uh, and explain to you why these are easy to not only reproduce, but how to spot them and things like that. So with the Market Maker cycle, the idea is that we're moving from peak formation to peak formation, uh, starting off with M's, W's, which we learned in the last video, uh, peak formation, so the W down low, that's going to be some kind of accumulation phase, uh, peak formation, and then levels of rise, right? So the, you have your first impulse up, and that is going to result in another peak formation high, followed by peak formation low, and then the continuation. So this would be like level one, level one consolidation, level two, level two consolidation, moving into level three, and then you can expect peak formation high to be formed, which would be the M, and then three levels of drop. Now, if the market was just going to range in between uh, high and low, then you would expect three levels of drop, they'd come back down, and then they'd go right back up three levels, and it would become very predictable, which sometimes it is. But of course, there's going to be instances where the market is trending, higher time frames or expanding ranges, and that's where things can become a little bit difficult if you don't truly understand the cycle and all of the details that came from the first two videos and going forward. The understanding of why the three-day cycle and setups work lie within the idea that the market moves in threes and it will make learning about the different kinds of setups a lot easier and a lot more simple. We're going to be getting into the different kinds of trade setups or signals within this video. So I'm gonna kind of front load that with this part of the market maker cycle and try to reference the different kinds of signals with this cycle so that you can kind of understand where I'm coming from later in this video. Uh, so down here at the lows, we have a peak formation low. Uh, this could be a first green day. This could be or result in day one or two of 
the three day cycle, or this could be like a day one breakouts. It could be a combination of two. It could be a first green day and day one of breakouts, uh, but overall, it could be one of these things. Now on the first level of rise, you might have a trend trade opportunity, maybe the following day, or maybe even over the course of two days. In two days, now you have your buy low opportunity depending on how that week is shaping up. Uh, now, once we get up into level two of rise, there might be opportunities for the counter trend opportunity, maybe at the high of the day or the high of the session. But ultimately what you're looking for is the buy low opportunity uh, for that trend trade going up into level three. But once you get up into level three, this is very important to understand. Once you get to level three, the market conditions may become choppy. The swings might seem like they're not going anywhere. Uh, you might result in some kind of large day of consolidation. Uh, but overall, what we're looking for out of that level three now is a first red day. Same thing is down here. You might have a day one or two of the three day cycle. Day one of breakouts back down to the downside. Following day, maybe looking for that sell high opportunity. Uh, you might get that buy low a uh, counter trend opportunity, depending on what session you're trading and things like that uh, down here. And then you're ultimately looking for the sell high opportunity. And uh, with these, you can measure the three levels of rise. If we're going to talk about the different levels and things like that in later videos, uh, but just keep in the back of your mind that this is where you're looking for the three levels of drop, uh, three levels of drop, three levels of rise, three levels of rise. We're in an up moving market and an up cycle. Uh, they've made a previous day's high and they're pulling back. That's how you can measure the th three levels of drop for your buy low, three levels of drop for your buy low, three levels of rise for your sell high. That's essentially what I'm referring to as the 100 pip box and depending on the volatility of that pair. If you're on something like Euro USD or something like that, you know, you might only have three levels of 25, uh, but with things like uh, indexes, gold, oil, you're definitely going to have at least those 25 pips of rise or fall, uh, but you might also have a market now that's moving in increments of 50 or even 100 where they've moved up 100 pips or maybe uh, 300 pips excuse me or you might have an instance where they move up 150 which is going to be boxes of 25 these are basically like strike zones for you to look for the trade all of this information is definitely going to make a lot more sense but just kind of put it in the back of your mind that i've talked about the three levels of rise and fall with the 100 pip box uh, we'll get into that a bit later also remember that the market is fractal. Depending on what time frame you're trading or over the course of multiple weeks or over the course of a day, this market maker cycle is going to repeat whether you know it or not. So looking at, this is a one hour chart of the NASDAQ and uh, down here was a pivot point, a peak formation low that resulted in multiple peaks. So it might be confused with three levels of rise. Now we're you know going, continuing the downtrend or whatever. Uh, but looking at this chart over time, you can use these little trend line tricks to find the break and then where the price essentially continued to go higher. Uh, this is going to a lot of times um, dictate where the end of the peak formation or that first level of rise. You can use this for any level of rise and it's a good little tool or trick to gauge where you're at within the cycle, either for the day or for the week or over multiple weeks. Uh, this was over the course of multiple weeks. Obviously this is a one hour chart. There's a lot of bars up here on the screen. Uh, but so we had a peak formation low and then one, the first level of rise, use that little trend line trick. There's the break. That's going to signal the end of level one. And then the next impulse move is going to then put us into level two. So now we have our trend line trick up into level two. There's the high, uh, the break, and then the continuation. Now we're up into level three. And going into level three, one of the things that Steve Morrow talks about is the 33 trade, three levels ending in basically another three levels. So this is the third level ending in that nice three peak pattern. Now we have our uh, new peak formation high. And overall, this turned into a much larger peak formation that rolled over and continued to go that way. Uh, but just understand that the market moves in threes. That's the real big takeaway from this. Uh, and there's little ways, little tricks that you can identify the end of those uh, three push patterns or the levels. And the, one of the ways that I do that is using that trend line trick, just like I've shown here. And then of course the cycle can also repeat itself every single day and it does repeat itself every single day. And depending on what level you're in for the week or for the month or the week or whatever it may be, I think I said week twice, whatever, yell at me in the comments, uh, it's going to kind of determine what price action or what type of daily cycle you're going to receive. Uh, on this example here, there's a peak formation low at the low of the current day that resulted in three levels of rise. We had the first impulse move up, resulting in that first consolidation. There's a little trend line break. Uh, we go up into level two now, trend line break again, leading us into level three. Remember back from the first video or the second video, 
uh, talking about micro M's and W's. Notice that little micro M up there. Four bar pattern, up, down, up, and then the engulfment back down. That is the reversal pattern. Uh, and then, of course, the larger M that is now built up here in level three. Larger M breaks down, first pullback, could be level one, drop, level two, drop, level three, and then goes back into consolidation. Now, this, I'm not trying to fool anybody. Notice this peak formation over here at the bottom is the same uh -oh, peak formation that I had dictated over here. So this was two days in a row over the course of three days. We had that three levels of drop on this day and then three levels of rise. And then again, three levels of drop back down. Opening range and initial balance and introducing this concept along with a three day cycle is usually where people start telling me that this is too complicated and I should find something easier to trade. I promise you, it's really not. So I'm gonna try and explain it. I'm gonna say as dumbed down as possible, but it kind of sounds rude. Uh, but as simple as I can, so that way it no longer feels like, oh, this is an overwhelming topic. Um, remember back, first two videos, only three things that markets do. Breakout trend, breakout reverse, stay in a trading range, identifying consolidations. Everything on the inside of a high and a low is a consolidation. Uh, opening range and initial balance is no different. The opening range and initial balance builds a range. And then all you have to do is apply now the three things that markets do. It's either gonna break out, pull back and trend. It's gonna break out reverse or stay inside of that trading range. And the original concept of using opening range and initial balance is definitely a day trading concept where, uh, you know, 30 minutes, an hour after the open, you have your opening range and initial balance range. And then looking at that range to determine what kind of day it's going to be. If you have a really wide, you know, opening range, initial balance, we might be in a ranging day. If it's more narrow, there's an opportunity that it's going to break out and begin to expand that range to the upside or to the downside. The same concept can apply to an entire week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, looking at the opening range and looking at the initial balance and determining what kind of weekly template you're currently in, whether it's going to be more of a whipsaw week where they spike the high, they spike the low, and it's a little bit more difficult to trade if you don't understand that. Uh, or is it a trending week where they break out of the opening range, initial balance, and start aggressively trending to the downside? And there's lots of different ways that you can determine uh, what type of week that you're in, specifically looking at weekly breakouts, determining, hey, we're in week one of breakouts. We've pumped it up to the high. We've got a first red day, you know, and they they broke out to the downside again. Those are good indications, but let's just go over opening range and initial balance first. We'll get to all that other stuff here in a second. So what is the definition of the opening range? The term opening range refers to a security's high and low for a short period just after the market opens, often the first 15 minutes of the trading day. And I pulled this from investopedia.com. You can just Google it yourself. This is the definition that they gave. Okay, initial balance is the first two trading periods within a given time period. Uh, so you have your opening range, maybe 15 minutes after the open, and then the second bracket of that trading could be the next 15 minutes to see what the market does in that next 15 minutes. This could be given, or this could be within the, uh, the trading session, stating the first 30 minutes as the opening range, the second 30 minutes as initial balance combined, you know, whatever you would like to do as far as the time, uh, but I think it's good to at least have, you know, those 30 minutes combined or maybe the first hour to kind of define the range and then go from there. So this is an example of one day of the New York session looking at opening range and initial balance. So we have our opening range low, opening range high. This is from 930 to 10. And then now we have our initial balance high where they've extended the range to the upside and the market only does three things. Breakout trend, breakout reverse or stay inside of a trading range. So they broke out. It's pulled back, we've made higher highs, and it's pulled back again, failed breakout, and we continue to trend higher and higher on the day. And because of the fractal nature of markets and the repeatable nature of the market, and because it only does these three things, you can apply the same concept now to the entire week. Here's another example just on the day itself. Opening range, initial balance has extended the range, breaking out of the opening range, so an opening range breakout, and then continuing to break out, making lower lows and lower highs throughout the day. So like I said, well, now we can apply this over a longer time frame, over the course of an entire week, to help us build a template or a thesis for how that week is developing or what we should be waiting for on any given day. So I've got this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday up here, just kind of illustrating the opening range, initial balance concept. Monday, opening range. Tuesday, initial balance, first trading day of the week, second trading day of the week, first bracket, second bracket, or the uh, opening range, and then the second day of the week, bracketing these two together, looking at the highs and the low. And then on Wednesday, now we have a breakout to the downside. So again, kind of similar to what we just looked at in the other 
Uh, shorter term examples, this is an opening range breakout. An initial balance uh, over the course of two days has built a rectangle. And now we may be in range expansion mode, expanding the low and the high to the downside in 100% expansions of that range. The high and the low create a consolidation. The market only does three things. And when it goes into expansion mode, that's where you're going to find your best risk to reward because they are moving in expanding ranges in one direction. Here's another example of exactly what we just talked about in the other uh, example. Monday, Tuesday builds a rectangle and then Wednesday turns into a breakout day, uh, breaking out of the opening range and initial balance, which created this rectangle and is now expanding the range to the downside with 100% expansions. You may have heard this reference to as a measured move. Uh, and then on this day here, obviously having a breakout day, so we've broken out to the downside, maybe I can look for a sell high opportunity on the next day, thinking about the market maker templates and things. So I can measure from this low up either 150 pips, depending on if I'm on indexes, gold, oil, or I can measure up three levels of 25 if I'm on something like Euro USD. Uh, something that is a little bit less volatile. You can measure up three levels of rise and then that will give you a decent strike zone. Uh, now, if a earlier session trades higher than that and then you're coming into the New York session, you can use just the high of the day as your reference point uh, to look for that trade. So for example, if the London session uh, had gone higher than 25 or excuse me, 75 pips, maybe this was 100 pips of rise or something along like that. That's just a, a kind of off the wall example. All you would have to do is draw your high of day level of there, up there and then wait for the market to trade back up into the high of the day and give you your engulfment back down. So that way you can not only confirm your thesis, but now it lets you know, hey, this is when I should be looking to take my trade. Targets for this would just be low of the day or low of the previous day in this example. But we'll get, like I said, more into the actual trading setups later on in this video and also in the next videos of the series. Over the next few, I have put our next few examples, I have put a bunch of different weekly template examples up here, just scrolling back over the last few weeks, uh, looking at the opening range and initial balance and looking at the relationship of what has happened throughout the week. So in this example, Monday, Tuesday, this dotted line here always is going to indicate uh, the new week. So this is Monday's day right here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and starting over again on Monday. Monday, Tuesday builds a rectangle. Monday's opening range was extended on Tuesday. Wednesday was a breakout day. Again, the market is only going to do three things. Breakout reverse, stay in a trading range, or uh, breakout in trend. So in this example, they've broken out, gone back into consolidation, and broke back down, and then broke back out to the other side. Now we have a bit of a ranging week, kind of like I talked about earlier in this video. You can have these ranging weeks where they put in a high, it puts in a low and then pulls it right back into consolidation. And I'm going to show you some tips later on that can kind of help you. I'm not going to say predict, um, but also look at the market in a way that says, hey, well, this is a down close day. What should I be looking for over here? Am I looking for trend continuation? What should I be doing? And if you've watched earlier videos, uh, the most recent ones about, I think it says full trading strategy or something like that in the thumbnail, uh, talking about the three day cycle and identifying these large down close days in an up moving market, looking at the weeks of breakouts to help you determine what you should be looking for on any given day. So in this example, we have a Monday, Tuesday, Monday's opening range. Tuesday was a breakout day creating the initial balance. Uh, but this is a great example of where you could be measuring down from not only previous days high, but where they've extended the high here. And you can measure down from that high of day three levels of drop, uh, whether that be three levels of 25, three levels of 50. And in some cases on much larger ranging days, that could even be three levels of 100. So you get your three levels of drop. There's your engulfment, a low of day trend trade, peak formation, breakout day, trend trade, breakout day, consolidation day. Uh, and then again, repeating the same behavior. This is a nice trending model or a trending week of the not only the three day cycle, but also a weekly template where you're getting that low of day trend trade opportunity. Once again, this was the low of the day over here. Notice the little the little W measuring down from the high, the current high of the day, three levels of drop, giving you a good uh, target or even just using the low of the day or closing price from the previous day. This is a bit of a larger opening range and the in, uh, the in initial balance was on the inside of the high and the low. So we had an opening range and an initial balance on the inside of Monday's opening range. And then Wednesday failed breakout, but they've gone higher, not a breakout day, 
pulled back, gone higher, but not a breakout day. And then on that third day, so peak one, peak two, and then going up into peak three, now we have our peak formation high at the high of the current week, uh, three peaks into the high of the week for the reversal back down. Now, again, these examples are not really meant to be uh, good trade examples. They're just meant to show you the different types of weeks that you can expect when you're using this style. And another one, Monday's opening range fairly wide. Tuesday, initial balance being on the inside of Monday's range. Uh, this day over here, peaking up through Tuesday's high, but not quite getting there. And then Thursday, trading up in one, two, and three into the high, creating a peak formation high and breaking down, uh, giving us the high of the week locked in, basically a high of week reversal trade back down. Now, this could have been in a down moving market. Uh, we're maybe breaking out to the downside, or it's just reading price action on the outside of the opening range and figuring out what type of setup you are actually taking. So this turned into a first red day and it looks like this day was a bit of consolidation over here or consolidation day. This would have been day one of the three day cycle, day two of the three day cycle, and then the following day after that would have then been day three. That's great, Cam. How in the world do I actually go about using this? Well, here's a, a few different points. Up until this point, over the course of this series, we've gone over how the market moves. And now we know that it moves in threes that the market only does three things, breakout trend, breakout reverse, or stay inside of a trading range. We know that the opening range and initial balance is essentially a consolidation, and that it's only going to do one of these three things. We've learned about peak formations and the, the market maker cycle, looking at peak formation lows, three levels of rise, peak formation highs, three levels of drop, the open high, low, and close of candles, and that people are making decisions based off of the close of those candles. And it's predictable to some degree where people are buying and selling in the chart and that we may be able to see where those people are caught in the chart at the extremes. We understand the previous days, highs and lows, uh, previous weeks, previous months, highs and lows, and that we're looking for breakouts and failed breakouts of those levels and understanding that when breakout traders are being triggered in at those levels, that they are putting stops down at the other ends of those ranges. The combination of these understandings is what builds the entire system. And this information is what the setups are built on and why they are so effective. Back in the 1950s, George Douglas Taylor uh, wrote a book called the Taylor Trading Technique. And this was the original three day cycle. He noticed a constant rhythmic one, two, three of the market and used this rhythm uh, in his studies in the trading pits uh, while watching the big money and that became the three day cycle. He noticed that after one to five days of decline, the market uh, would open, make its low in the morning and close in the upper third of a day's range. Uh, and this would essentially be day one of the cycle where they forced a low and then they closed in the upper third of the range. So kind of think about what I've just said, a peak formation low, closing up high first green day, day one of the cycle. Uh, sell days, covering the longs from the previous day. So this is essentially the rally after uh, your buy day. So you would get a buy day, you buy the close, and then any rally on the next day, you're now looking to uh, sell, essentially you know, get rid of your, your buy position on the rally the following day. A day that trends away from the buy day lows typically trading higher than the buy day highs, that's going to be day two. If the sell day has a strong close, follow through could occur on the following day for day three. Uh, sell short day could come immediately following the buy day if the buy day behavior present in the opposite direction. After the market moves higher for two to three days, you can expect a sell short day with the exception of strong breakouts. There might be uh, an additional few days added. So this could be considered a extended run uh, where you have three, four, five, six, seven days of uptrending market. And you might even get a down close day in between there. And then it just continues to rally the following day. And this is because the larger templates or the larger time frames are expanding maybe on a weekly chart or a daily chart or a monthly chart or something like that. It's going on a larger expansion to the upside and it just continues to pull in that direction. After the market has moved higher for two to three days, the day will open, make its high in the morning and close near its lows in the lower third of the day's range. So again, think about what I've just said. Peak formation high attempts to make a new higher high. Previous day's high has been broken. They tried to go higher. They put in the M and then closed in the lower third of that day's range, a first red day. And with these first red and first green days, they're typically going to be either day one or day two of the three day cycle. They're either going to present at the high or the low of the current week. For a first green day, you can expect a peak formation low. So you're gonna get a W. 
Uh, could be an inside day. Could be a failed breakout at the low of the current week. Uh, and it's best found either after three to four weeks of breakouts to the downside. Now, of course, there's going to be ones where you know, you're in week one of breakout to the downside and you get a first green day. That's fine. Week two. But just understand that if you're in breakout mode to the downside, that first green day is likely just going to be a pullback for the larger market. Uh, in breakout markets to the upside, weekly breakouts followed by one to three days of dump and a first green day. So after these first green days or with the first green days, peak formation low inside day, like I just said, the day after first green day is the day to look for that buy low opportunity. Buy low equals low of previous day, low of the current day, low of the session, or at closing price, depending on how the day's template is building, depending on how the day's price movements have presented. Going from left to right, notice that this is multiple days of breakouts to the downside, resulting in our first green day. And within these multiple days of breakouts down, we go. Breakout day one, breaking out of previous day's low, and closing breakouts, breakouts. Uh, and then over here on the fourth day, they attempted to trade back down into the low three times, which is the creation of the W, the peak formation. There's the, the left side, there's the middle point, and then the right side of that W. And then this engulfment back up basically leaves all of that consolidation down at the bottom creating like i said the w okay so this is an inside day and also a first green day this inside day did not trigger previous days low or previous days high but it attempted to force the low and then closed in the upper third of that day's range and on this day right here is the day that we would actually be looking for the trade uh, either from the low of the day closing price or the low of the session so this was an index uh, this little pin hammer here was in the u.s session the new york session and obviously the continuation happened soon after and remember the different types of first green days. You can have one in an overextended market with multiple weeks or multiple days of breakouts in a direction. But you can also have them in an up moving market, which is honestly a little bit more preferable uh, because of your, the trend is your friend until the end. And this is a way of getting in line with the trend using weekly templates and these signals. So we have an up moving market that's going higher and higher. Uh, and then this large day of decline, one large day of decline in an uptrending market, uh, a day that is attempted to force the low, right? Breaking out down here, not a first green day. And then on the following day, they attempted to force the low and then closed in the upper third of that day's range. Now we have our first green day. We have our high of the week in an uptrending market. And after our first green day, built a box consolidation at closing price, and the uptrend or the continuation move on the news. This was a news candle. Uh, regardless of the news candle, this is still a good template based off of one large day of decline, first green day, and then first green day trade on that Friday. Large pumping day, three peaks into the high, new week begins. And then you have a day that is attempted to force the high. And on the following day, a breakout day. So we have multiple days of, or three days of higher prices this notice the closing price we've gone higher we've gone higher we've gone higher and then we've got this overextended market three weeks of breakouts to the upside resulting in a first red day which was also a opening range breakout to the downside and then three levels of rise for the high of day trade on the following day after the first red day and also the first day of breakouts now to the downside and the great thing about this is first red days is exactly the same as first green day just flipped over uh, the exact same thing, but multiple weeks of breakouts to the upside. And then you get a first red day, multiple days of pump and a first red day, but you're looking for a sell high opportunity. It's just the flipped over version of a first green day. So in reference to the three day cycle and trying to make the setups a little bit more simple, uh, I've got a little picture over here of the market maker templates, peak formation low, three levels of rise followed by first red day. Uh, so for a first red day, large pumping day, a peak formation day that attempted to force a high. Uh, now this was not the first red day, but this was a peak formation day and a confirmed breakout. But then you get your first red day on the following day. And that provides you the trade opportunity on this day over here. So we had a large pumping day, lots of space to get from where price is right here back down to these lows uh, and then you have your trade day after your first red day over here trying to get at the high of this day high of the session uh, which this was again another news day but the setup still applies and three days of breakouts is fairly similar to first red and first green day as far as the market maker template goes uh, the understanding that when you have peak formation low and three levels of rise that you are looking for a reversal trade on that third day or the day after the third day. So we could have some instances where 
your first day of breakouts, your second day of breakouts, and on that third day where they attempt to go higher, that could be the trade. Or after the third day, depending on how this day behaves, now we might have our trade over here on this day. So the third day of breakouts would be like the signal to be watching the following day. And then on this day over here, I don't want to be, you know, catching the falling knife, if you will. Uh, of course, this is going higher, so I guess I'm not really catching anything. But as it's going higher, making higher highs and higher lows, I would be waiting for a lower low to be put in place uh, for this specific signal. For three days of breakouts, I want to see either a higher high or a lower low before I consider taking that trade uh, as a larger signal. So in this case, peak formation low, three days or three levels of rise. This candle down right here was the lower low. This little in-between candle would have been the pump up or the uh, the pullback, so breakout, pullback, and then continuation back down. And of course, the same thing applies to the downside. Three, uh, three levels of drop or peak formation high, three days of breakouts, and then getting the higher highs on the day itself, making higher highs and higher lows. You get your little parabolic channel. Again, looking for low of day, low of session opportunities from closing price. So in this case, this closing price would have been projected across. But now we have three days of drop, peak formation low, and then the price going back for the money. We have breakout traders triggered into the market for three days. They're going back for the money. And where's that going to occur at? There's breakout traders that have been triggered in each day and they're putting their stops at the highs of the previous day or even at the breakout level. So maybe we're gonna go back for the breakout trader, uh, you know, the break even stops. And in this example here, ultimately going back for the previous day's high to stop out any of those breakout traders who has been trailing their stops down uh, lower and lower. All of these following examples are from this last week indexes, gold, oil, and also natural gas. Uh, so again, just reinforcing the concepts that we've already talked about opening range, initial balance, opening range, Monday, initial balance, Tuesday, uh, builds a range, builds a consolidation, peak formation low at the low of the current week. And over the course of two days, this breakout has now failed. So we have a day that has attempted or forced a low to the downside, and it failed on the following day, which means that the day that it forced the low is going to become day one of the three-day cycle. So we have day one of the three-day cycle, day two of the three-day cycle, which has resulted in a breakout back up to the upside. Uh, just a little price action note to notice uh, notice how they broke out here and pulled back once, twice, and three times up into the high, creating peak formation high at the high of the current week. They forced a high on day three of the three-day cycle. Uh, the three things that markets do, we're either going to break out, pull back, and continue to trend, or it's going to break out and fail and reverse back down towards the other side of the range. Similar example, Another down moving market where we've had weeks of breakouts to the downside. Uh, opening range, initial balance, again, peak formation. They forced a low on this Tuesday and then it failed on Wednesday, trading back up to the high, turning into a breakout day. And on day three of the three day cycle, they attempted to force the high again, consolidated and broke back down. So now we have a failed breakout. This day three of the three day cycle, because they attempted to force a high, at the high of the day and the high of the week is going to now revert back to day one. Think back to what I said about uh, the three day cycle with Taylor. Day two is going to typically trend away from the peak formation. So we have a peak formation day one, three day cycle, which also turned into a first red day, large pumping day in a down moving market, first red day, and then now looking for the market to trend away from day one highs. So we had a sell high in the London session. And then down here, we were already in breakout mode to the downside on oil, expanding the range of this consolidation here to the downside. Different template, but natural gas, opening range, and then initial balance, they've extended and broke out to the upside. And again, we're only going to do three things. It's either going to continue to trend or it's going to fail. And it failed in this example, giving us a new day one of the three day cycle. Now, natural gas is also in a downtrend. They've been breaking out of weekly ranges to the downside. Previous week's low has been broke out of for multiple weeks. So day one, three day cycle, also a first red day, large pumping day, a day that attempted to go higher and made its lows in the afternoon, first red day. So now I can measure from here, three levels of rise, uh, or just look at the high of the day, high of the session, watching for those engulfments. We're gonna go over all the entry stuff in the next couple videos. Uh, but again, high of day sell on this day here, a strong or a 
I should say a weak close, a weak close, a market that is traded down in a down moving market and closed very weak, pumping back up on the following day in a nice three push pattern, and then continuing to make its run to the downside, giving us the trend trade coming off of the high of the day. Market only does three things, breakout trend, breakout reverse, or stay inside of a trading range, breakout fail, return back down to the other side of the range, and maybe even breakout and trend to the other side. This was gold from last week. We had an opening range, initial balance breakout. Now this was a good example of a trending week where uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday was the, the better template. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday, there was a trend trade breakout. We're either gonna do three things. This time it decided to trend and continue to go higher, uh, albeit it was a little bit choppy in here, but the continuation trade on Wednesday nonetheless. Now this was our first push outside of the opening range and then Thursday was the second push outside of the opening range. And then that gave us Friday with the third push outside of the opening range, peak formation, low of week, level one, level two, level three, peak formation high, and then of course the reversal uh, on this day over here. Now this is a one hour chart. Uh, so I, I'm gonna say that there's probably a lower low or something in here on a lower time frame that I could have used. Um, but regardless, high of day, trades back into the high of the day. We're not gonna worry too much about that. Um, again, just looking at the different kinds of templates. Uh, so day one of the three day cycle, they attempted to go higher and it failed giving us day one. Now, instead of trending away from uh, day one highs, day two broke out to the upside. So this gives us a lot of information based off of what kind of three day cycle we're in. I'm gonna say that again. Day one, day two is supposed to trend away from day one highs, but it broke out to the upside, giving us a lot of information for day three. Day three blew off in the direction of the current trend, uh, which now is going to turn into day one. This day three reverts back to day one because there was no failed breakout. We're in a trend. So on day two, we should be expecting them to either one, consolidate or trend away from day one lows. So we got a consolidation day instead of a trend day. And then on day three, we continue to go higher and attempt to break out for that third day. And now again, I'm gonna revert back to market's only gonna do three things. There we go. Day three of the three day cycle turns into the reversal day. And last but not least, the Euro USD uh, Monday, Tuesday, opening range. Now they attempted to force Monday's low here. It broke out and it failed and it pulled back up on the inside of Monday's range and closed. That gave us day one of the three day cycle. Now day two is supposed to trend away from day one lows, but instead of breaking out and trending higher, it broke out and failed and closed back on the inside of Tuesday's range. So now we have a peak formation at the low of the week, a peak formation above Tuesday's high, giving us peak formation low, peak formation high, and a consolidation or a rectangle to the side, uh, going sideways. And then on day three of the three day cycle now, day one, day two, day three, we have the blow off move in the London session down through the lows. This is a trend trade. But on day three, they attempted to force the low. And then on the next day, it then fails and blows off this way. So now we've trended away from day one lows, day two, and then Monday would be day three of the three day cycle. And I have no idea what that's going to do, but I can go into Monday with the understanding that it is day three and that the market is only going to do three things. And then I should be waiting for the opening range and initial balance of the week to determine what kind of template I could be currently in, or just looking at the signal days that I receive from either Thursday or Friday and making it a determination whether or not I have a template for ladies and gentlemen in the rest of this series we're now going to go into entries watch the first three videos you should see lots of examples now of day one two and three of the three-day cycle if you need extra references for the three-day cycle i have some listed up here again the slideshow is down in the description of this video so you can click on these links and go to these youtube videos if you need if you have questions about the market maker cycle or peak formations i have those listed as well as well as a ton of videos in my playlist, uh, watch in order for effective learning, which you can also find on my YouTube channel to make things a little bit easier going into the entries portion of this series. I hope this video has provided some kind of value to you. If you have, or if it has, let me know down in the comments below. Make sure to hit the like button and I will see you in the next video.